Thank you on today, Jesus. Your scripture says we should enter into your court with thanksgiving in our hearts and into your gates with praise, dear God. So we thank you, dear God. We give you the thanks, dear God, that you deserve, dear God. You haven't just been a good God now, dear God. You haven't just been a good God, dear God, when we met you, dear God, but you've been a good God for a long time, dear God. Yes, Jesus, you've been with us, dear God. You've been fighting for us, dear God, orchestrating things, dear God, for our good, dear God, turning things, dear God, so that we, dear God, always prosper, dear God, in the end, dear God. Not even in the way we think we prosper, dear God, but in the right way we should prosper dear God so we thank you Jesus for being who you are dear God we thank you dear God for what you have for us on tonight dear God on this evening dear God we thank you dear God that no matter what happens to us dear God you still give us still a chance times dear God people dear God places where we can go to get rest dear God to get strength encouragement dear God so we can continue on with the race dear God so I pray that you will prepare our hearts right now dear God for that race dear God where our ears are closed dear God where our eyes and our hearts are attuned to your spirit and what you're trying to tell us, Lord God. I pray that you would open our hearts, Lord God. We pray that you will give us, Lord God, ears to hear, Lord God. Hear what you have for us, Lord God, because it's by the hearing of the word, Lord God, that we can truly believe and we can put faith and we can grow the seed of the word, Lord God, into a tree that brings forth the fruit of the word, Lord God. And the fruit it was is what causes prosperity, Lord God. Not financial prosperity, Lord God, but emotional prosperity, Lord God. Family prosperity, Lord God. Marriage prosperity, Lord God. Ministerial prosperity, Lord God. So I pray, dear God, that we would give us, dear God, those ears to hear, dear God, what you have for us, dear God. Strengthen, dear God, us to receive from you, dear God. And even the people here, strengthen them to give, dear God. I just prayed for that we would have your way with us, dear God, during this service, dear God. Let us not, dear God, quench the spirit, dear God. Let us not turn our ears away from you, dear God. But I pray, dear God, that you, dear God, would truly help us, dear God, to hear from you, dear God, to receive from you, dear God. Because we, no matter how much you give, no matter how much you speak, dear God, unless we receive, dear God. We can't receive a blessing, dear God, and we can't receive deliverance, dear God. So I pray this prayer, dear God, in your name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I give myself away Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you. Your desire. 
Oh 
Just Lord, right now, Hallelujah. Search us, Lord, right now, Hallelujah. Everything I give to You, everything I give to You, my money, Lord. future, Lord.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. You are good. Hallelujah. You are good. Hallelujah. That's why we can serve you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because you are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we thank you. We thank you that, Lord, your mercies, hallelujah, endure. Hallelujah. Your mercies endure forever, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah, Lord. We just give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, that you have been and you are and you will continue to be good to us. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Hallelujah for what you have done so far. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for exposing your goodness to us. We thank you, Lord, for un our Lord, uncovering your goodness towards us, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for revealing, hallelujah, the goodness that is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, that you have never forsaken us, Lord, and you will never in the name of jesus we thank you we thank you we thank you lord hallelujah lord we join with heaven hallelujah and we declare that this is our recovery time in the name of jesus lord this is the season and the time of recovery in the name of jesus lord you're releasing in heaven lord the windows of heaven have been lord swung open hallelujah lord hallelujah lord hallelujah I hear your word declaring lord the set time to favor Zion has come in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you for the favor of God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Even as I said that scripture, the set time to favor God has come. Hallelujah. I want to declare today that God, hallelujah, is already, hallelujah. God has been waiting, hallelujah, to bless Zion, to bless, hallelujah, the people of God. And he has declared that it is the set time. Hallelujah. But this is not just any and every blessing. This is the blessing that belongs to the children of God. Hallelujah. This is a blessing that belongs to the faithful fuller to the obedient in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that there is an anointing, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, to pursue. Hallelujah, Lord, to overtake and to recover all. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank every one of you, hallelujah, who are, who are listening at this time. Hallelujah. We pray that what you have heard so far has been a blessing and what you will hear will continue to be a blessing in Jesus' name. Praise God. We want to thank God for the leadership of the ministry. We thank God for Chief Apostle Christine Chiddick. Amen. We thank God for her allowing God not only to speak, but for having a yes in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God for our pastor here, Pastor Alex. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Another Lord surrendered vessel of God. And we thank God for our ministers. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. And we thank God today. I know, I know you are my children, but I thank God for you not only as my children, but as ministers of God. Hallelujah, Lord servants of God. Hallelujah, Lord. We don't realize, most of us don't realize that every one of us is in service. Every one of us is serving someone or something. When what God is saying that I have a blessing to those that serve me. I have a blessing to those that says yes to my will and to my way in the name of Jesus. And we have been we are going to be, amen, and we have been in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30, amen, and I'm just going to read, amen, our theme scripture, amen, which is 1 um, Samuel 30 and verse 8. 1 Samuel 30 and verse 8, it says, so David inquired of the Lord, amen, saying, shall I pursue this troop? So David is asking the question here, shall I pursue? And God's answer is what? And he answered him, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. And last week, Pastor Alex ministered about, you mean, there can be no recovery without pursuit. And I want to join tag team, oh God, build upon, amen, as God is teaching us how to build the church upon that foundation of pursuit. And I want you to know that God is indeed ready to bless Zion, but Zion has got to be ready to pursue. But this afternoon, I want to speak about the double pursuit. 
I want to speak about the pursuit that you do that is followed by a pursuit that God does. You see, we are going to recover everything. We are going to recover all, not only because we pursue, but when we pursue, God pursues us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And, you know, I was thinking about the scripture this week, you know, even on yesterday, I got up and I, 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 and I couldn't walk. Amen. I had this pain in my feet and I was like, my Lord, what is this? I, I thought that my foot was broken. Amen. My right foot. And I was, I'm still in pain, but I know that God is going to take care of that. And, you know, a lot of times we get, we get, we get injured along the way. Amen. We get injured like Jacob, amen, got injured along the way. But God needs somebody who's going to hold on until he blesses them. Because when you hold on, God is not only going, you are not only going to pursue God, but God is going to pursue you with a blessing. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. What does the word pursue mean? The word pursue means to run after, usually with hostile intent. So pursue means to run after with hostile intent. Meaning that there is something about my running that is hostile. There is something about my running which is not just the ordinary run. It's not just me running to prove that I can run. As a matter of fact, I am running. Your running is not successful unless you overtake. Because running is also a chase. So when God says to pursue, he's saying that you should chase. But when you chase after something, you are chasing not just so you can beat the air and say, I chased. But you are chasing so that you can reach a goal. You are chasing so you can get to your destination. Or you can get to the prize. It also means to put to flight. And it also means to hunt. And so when God tells us to pursue. The, what, what are we pursuing? We are pursuing that which we shall overtake and recover. You are not pursuing blindly. You are pursuing that which you are going to overtake. And that which you are going to recover. And God says that there are some things that I have spoken. There are promises that I have given you. And you need to understand that you have to hunt them. You have to set yourself as a hunter. On last week, Pastor Alex spoke about that, that movie that she was watching was War of the Arrows. Amen. And I watched it. She, she, Pastor Alex wanted me to watch it. And I, and I didn't watch it at first. Amen. But I watched it with her. Amen. And she was, she was um, loving enough to give me a second opportunity. Like Christ gave the, gave the church many opportunities. And I'm telling you, that was a chase. But you see, you, 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 we have to understand that God wants us to set our hearts to pursue. If we are going to recover anything in this year, God wants us to set our heart, our heart to pursue. Now, as I was reflecting this week, I have, I'm going to minister today because there are some folks who they have failed God and because they have failed God, or let's back up, but let's back up. There are some of us that because we have failed God, it seems to us that it is impossible to recover. So we begin our pursuit already with a mind that I am not going to get what God has assigned for me. But this afternoon, we speak into the heart of every backslider, into every person who know that God has called him. But because of failure, you are doubting yourself that God says that I am going to pursue you as you pursue me. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Amen. And if you seek God, he is going to allow you to find him in the name of Jesus. And so I want to jump into some scriptures. Amen. I know 1 Samuel chapter 30 is what we looked at. And I want to use some scriptures along with that. And I want us to go to the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to spend some time in Deuteronomy today. And I'm going to slow down a bit 
so I can make sure I'm saying what the Lord has put in my heart. I want you first, I said Deuteronomy 7, but let's turn to Deuteronomy 28, very famous scripture in the kingdom of God. Not so? Very famous. And a lot of times you don't read it all the way to, all the way through. No, I'm reading from verse 1. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. To observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you, overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And we're going to stay in these two verses just for a little bit. The word shall was mentioned here twice. It was mentioned in verse 1 and it was mentioned in verse 2. It says here, the law and it shall come to pass. And I had to go back and I had to ask the English teacher this afternoon, amen, what is a helping verb? Because the word shall is actually a verb, but it is a helping verb. It helps to define, it, hip, it helps to describe, it, hem, it, it, it helps to give you a, a good understanding of what the actual verb is. And the word of the Lord says, it shall come to pass. In other words, it is a definite, it is a sure thing. It is not, it's not something that is a maybe. It's not a gamble, but God is saying that if you obey me this year, these things shall come upon you. It means that it's not, it's not up in the air. It is definite. It is guaranteed. What is different or what is the opposite of it shall come to pass? The opposite is, is it may come to pass. It might come to pass. It can come to pass or it could come to pass. And I want you to understand that the Lord didn't use any of these, of these helping verbs. He didn't use a may, he didn't use a might, he didn't use a can, and he didn't use a could. But he used what? It shall. Meaning, it is definite, it is written. I hear him saying in Jeremiah 29, I know the plans that I have for you to give you an expected end, to give you what? A sure future. Amen. And so God is saying to the church and to the body of Christ and to the backslider and to, the, and to those who have failed him before that if you obey, if you trust me to listen and obey, I'm going to bring some things to pass. He says it shall come to pass if you diligently obey. What is he going to do? And verse 2 starts with a conjunction. Am I right? That conjunction means that verse 1 and verse 2 are linked. So when I obey, all these blessings shall do what? Come upon. What does that sound like? All these best blessings shall what? Pursue you. All these blessings, the next thing, they shall come upon you and do what? And overtake you. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And I want you to know as you pursue God that the word of the Lord is going to pursue you this year. If you just obey God, not only are you going to run after the things of God, but the blessings of the Lord will be running after you. They're going to come on you. They're going to overtake you. And you are going to see what God has in store for you. The problem is that many of us believe that because I failed God, because I disappointed God, that my blessing has been canceled. But I'm here to tell you today that the cancellation has been canceled. That God has canceled the cancellation. Your flight has been reordered. Amen. In the name of Jesus. God is ready to do again just what he promised. 
And when we read Deuteronomy 28, it makes us feel sometimes that in the midst of our failure, that God is taking it all away. But I want us to go two chapters over to chapter 30. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 30. And that's why I said this is a year of double pursuit. God is promising that if you pursue me, I am going to pursue you. If you pursue me, I'm going to allow the windows of heaven to open over you. Wherever your soul of your feet trod, there will be a blessing in store for you. Praise God. And verse chapter 30 and verse 1 opens up with the same phrase. Now it shall God wants us to understand that when I declare a thing, I mean it. When I declare a thing, time cannot steal it away. Hallelujah, Lord. No one else can steal it away. If you are persuaded, God is going to assign blessings to you as you run. But you got to be persuaded. You got to be persistent in your run. You got to be determined that I am going to obey his commandments. You see, when David inquired, God gave him a command. And he stepped out on the word of God. And when you step out on God, God has released in his will some things for you. Now it shall come to pass, when all these things come upon you, the blessings and the curse, which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God drives you. And you do what? Return. I want, the re I want those returning to God know that this blessing is for you. We're in verse 2. This blessing is also for you. If you listen to verse 1, you understand that the people of God were going to go through a time when they were going to be experiencing the curse and not only the blessing. The reason we experience the curse is because we fail God. The reason why, if you, if you, if you go through Deuteronomy 28 and even Deuteronomy 7, certain curses come upon us when we turn against God or when we do not follow his commandments. But what God is saying to us today that even in your failure, if you can just turn to him in your failure, that he still is going to assign the blessings. That's why when the prodigal son came home, he was still assigned a blessing. He, he wasn't just coming home to be a servant, but God was going to restore just what he had said to him. And I'm speaking today to everyone that has failed God at some time, to everyone who feels as if because of how, how deep, how, how strong my failure is, that God can bless me, that God says, even in the midst of the curse, if you return, if you return, so in this year of recovery, recover your salvation. Recover your walk with the Lord. Recover your conviction that God is your savior. This recovery is not only for those that never let go. But this recovery is for those that let go. But have come to their senses and realize, I'm going to hold on. God has the blessing for you too. That's why the 200 that, that was left behind, when they couldn't make it with, with David, when they got the spoils of war, God even allowed them through David to get reward also. I'm telling you, God knows us. Amen. He knows your frame and he knows what you can and cannot handle. And I promise you that if you turn to God, that he is going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above everything you can ask or think. And so in verse 2 he says, and you, so here we understand that the children of Israel went through some, con, some sort of circumstances because they did not trust God. Maybe they turned to the left or to the right. But what God is saying here is that if you return, I'm going to set some things in motion for you. And that's why I want you to understand we can pursue, we can, turn, we can run after in a hostile manner, we can chase. And we can hunt what God. You know what it means to hunt? When you hunt something, you got to find the scent. You got to find evidence of where it has been. 
You have to find evidence of what was. If you're going to hunt something, you can't just hunt it by the present. You have to hunt it because you are now looking for evidence of what was. And I know some of you have been in the what was. But God is saying if you set yourself to hunt, I'm going to give you the scent. I'm going to give you the trail of that which was. And you are going to hunt it and you are going, you're going to not only hunt the past, but the past is going to become the present. And I'm going to show you in scripture that the future is going to be even better than the past. And you return to the Lord your God and obey his voice according to all that I command you today. So he's going back to the same commandment, Pastor Alex. Even though we fail, come back. What is he going to do? You and your children, with all your heart and with all your soul. It takes all heart and all soul. Listen, you got to be totally sold out. You got to be totally sold out. You got to give God every. You got to really depend on your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 3. That the Lord your God will bring you back from captivity. And have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you. If any of you are driven out to the farthest parts on the heaven, I don't care how far you have gone from God. If you set your heart to return, he is going to hunt you. He is going to bring you back into your land, into your purpose. From there, verse 4. The Lord, your God, will gather you. And from there, he will bring you. In other words, he's not even waiting for you to come back. He's not waiting for you to get all the way back to who you were in Christ. All he needs is a persuasion, is a commitment, is a heart decision, is a wholehearted decision. And he is going to come and snatch you right where you are. Amen. Verse 5. Then the Lord, now listen to this now. Then the Lord your God will bring you to the land which your fathers possessed. And you shall possess it. I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to hunt you. I'm going to pursue you. I'm going to overtake you. And then I'm going to recover all. But I want you to understand, church of the living God, the people of God, the, those of you listening who may not know God, I want you to hear the character of God. Yeah. Not only does God pursue, not only does God overtake and recover, his recovery is different. His recovery is more than what was. His recovery is even to give you increase to what was. I'm going to read it. Verse 5. Then the Lord your God will bring you to the land which your fathers possessed. And you shall possess it. He will do what? Prosper you and multiply you more than your fathers. It's a long, it, we, we need to look at scripture and understand scripture. He is talking to the backslider here. He's talking to those who have left their first love. He's talking to those who have issues that have caused us to leave, to turn our back. But even while you are in your mess, there is something about God that just will not leave you. And God is saying this afternoon, if you can just listen to the knock on your door, because he promised to stand at the door of your heart knocking. If you, if you respond to the knock of God, he is not only going to pursue, he's not only going to overtake, and he's not going to do a normal recovery, but he's going to give you more than you had. And that's why you can have courage to return. Because you're not going to just return. He's ready to give you a robe, a ring. He's ready to, to create a feast. Angels are wait, just waiting to, to blow up the party balloons and celebrate. Because at the return of one soul, angels rejoice. And I, I'm, I'm speaking not only to those who have left the church, but those who are in the church 
who are still serving the Lord, but there is not a full commitment or there is something or some things that are hindering your walk. There are some besetting sins. There are some weights that easily beset. But God is saying just right now, you need to begin with the pursuit and the pursuit starts with your heart chasing after God. If your heart begins to chase after God, God is going to just line everything else up for you. Yes, we will, we will face trials. Yes, we will go through tribulations. But I like what I heard this morning. It's not the losses that define God. It's the end result. And God wants to bring us to an expected end. I hope you are being blessed this afternoon. And so I'm not quick to move on to the overtaking because God still wants us to understand that there is need for a pursuit. You must understand that David pursued for some time before he saw what he was pursuing. The pursuit didn't start and immediately he saw the blessing. The pursuit started and he had to determine that I will not walk by sight, but I will walk by faith. I will not pursue by sight, but I will pursue by faith. I will not hunt by sight, but I will hunt by faith. I will not run in vain, but I will run in faith, believing that God is able to perform just what he promised. And that's what God is saying. In this year of recovery. I need some people who are sold out. I need some people who are, who are persuaded. That what I say. Will come to pass. And, and first off. They're going to pursue me. And in pursuing me. I'm going to release. I'm going to release. You see there is a tag team. That's why I say it's double pursuit. It's you pursuing. And God pursuing. It is you pursuing and God pursuing. It's a hand-in-hand hand battle, but it's also a hand-in-hand hand victory. If you run after God, you shall find him. And you know what God is? God is blessing. Yes, he is. And so, when we look at Deuteronomy chapter 30, we understand that when, even when we fail God, he doesn't say, I might bless you. I can bless you, you know. I, we know that God can. God can do exceedingly. But he's making it clear it's not just a can. It's what I am going to do. It is promise. It is a fact. Whether you see it or not, it shall. And so, I like that. I don't like that God may. I'm glad he, he's not a may God. He's not a might God. But he's a shall God. What he promised shall come to pass. And I don't know how much. Amen. I want us to go to another scripture here. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. It starts out in verse 1. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess. And that's it. That's all I want from that verse. <clears throat> but I want you to understand that there is a land that God is bringing you into. We're going to look at verse 12. What does verse 12 start with? Then it might? No, then it shall. It is a sure thing. Then it shall come to pass when you listen, no, listen doesn't just mean that you hear. It means that you're, less, that you're hearing with an intent to understand, to comprehend, so that you will know how and what to do. God doesn't only want us to have the will, but he wants us to have the will and to do. And God is saying when you, it shall come to pass, because you listen to these judgments and keep and do them. So there's a hearing and a doing. Hearers of the word and doers of the word. It's very important. It's very important. That the Lord your God will keep with, sorry, and keep to do them that the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the mercy which he swore 
to your fathers. So when I do what I have to do, the Lord says that he is going to keep with me. He's not just going to speak the word over me. The, the, the word is going to be what? With me. He's going to keep what? The covenant and the mercy. That's why we can return because there's going to be the covenant and there's going to be the mercy. And verse 12, and he, and, and he said, and he will love you, verse 13, and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless, and he goes on. Notice here, he's, if you look at those scriptures, he is actually beginning to quote similar to Deuteronomy 28. But what I want you to come with me is this. Verse 22, and I'm coming to a close. Verse 22 declares, and the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. You will be unable to destroy them at once. Lest the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. And I'm going to use this verse here to make a declaration. The Lord is saying that in this year of recovery, everything is not going to happen at once. And that's why we can't get discouraged if we don't see what we need in January. You can't get discouraged if you don't see it by the spring of 2023. But what you need to do is to study what he is doing day by day. So God is saying here, and the Lord your God will drive out these nations before you little by little. These are the same, this is the same prophet Moses speaking. I've been quoting Moses almost all afternoon. So all these blessings, all these multiplying, all these things Moses was speaking to the people of God. But he's making it clear that as you go into the year of the recovery, because when they entered into the land, it was to recover what God had promised them. As you enter into your recovery, everything is not going to happen at once. The Lord God will drive out these nations before you how? By little. They wandered in the wilderness 40 years. How many years? 40 years. They wandered in the wilderness 40 years. When they entered into, into, in, in, into Canaan, it was 40 years later. When, how old was Caleb when they spied out the land? Caleb was 40 years old. He was 45? All right. He was 45 years old. And when Caleb said, give me my land, some time had passed. Amen? And what God is saying to us today is that I want you to understand that what I say will happen, but sometimes it has to take place little by little. It, see, now in verse 7 of chapter 14 of Joshua, the word of the Lord declares, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me to Kadesh, Barnea, to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. You, say, you see, Caleb was actually 85, so I was correct. Caleb was 40 years old when they were about to enter into Canaan. If it was the exact time that they entered that he said this to Joshua, then it would have been, he would have been how old? 80. But five years had passed since they entered into the promise, since they entered into recovery, until Caleb said, it is high time, give me. But some of the lands had already been captured at that time. Some of the recovery had already taken place little by little, little by little. I want you to understand little is not that you are not getting the rest. But God knows I have to give you in stages. 
lest. Amen. And I, I had to go back quickly and remove myself from Deuteronomy because I was like, Lord, I can't believe my point. I had, I had, I had seen my point off. Amen. So God wants us to understand. And, you know, I had a burden this, this week for the older saints and for the unsaved. And that's why I want you to understand that if you return or what's another word for returning? Repentance. If you repent, God is going to not only give you back what you miss, but he's going to give you what? More. And for those of you who are, how should I say it, advanced in years, like Elizabeth was. For those of you who are advanced in years, if God said it, you still have the power to do it. And so the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. You will be unable to destroy them at once. And this is instructive to us as saints. If we understand this, then we won't lose hope when God doesn't do it all at once. When it happens in a portion, a portion, a portion, we understand that, not, that God is not being, un, being unjust to us. But he's given us so that we can be successful. And that's why even those that went before us cannot fulfill everything without us. Because God keep on revealing more and more and more of himself. I really want to speak this word of encouragement into the aged and into those who know that you have failed God. And guess what? All of us fall into that category. All of us fall into that category. And it's not one point in time that you have failed God. You have failed him. We have failed him many times. But he has given us an anointing and he has given us a promise that when we return, and the return doesn't have to mean that you return for a season. This can be your return for good. This can be your final return, meaning you never leave him again. And because God promised us this, we can claim the year of recovery and God is going to snatch you from what you need deliverance from. Little by little. You know, I have a friend, and, and I know he posted that there's something that he's dealing with, and I know exactly what he's talking about. And he's getting better day by day. And I'm going to send him this little verse of scripture when, when we finish tonight. That God can do it little by little. I can get there day by day. God shall do it. Each day will be a victory. Each week, we will have victory. Each month, we will have victory. And this year, we will see many victories. God wants to do exceedingly abundantly. I started out by speaking about the word shall and that it's a helping verb. When God left, when Jesus was about to leave, what did he tell us? I'm going to send you what? <laughs> to get you moving. To define your action. To give you an understanding of what you can do. I'm going to send you the helper. And he's going to Lord, lead you into what? All truth. That's what God wants to do. And the Holy Spirit is waiting just to give you a chance to experience the blessings of God. The blessings is not for those only who think that they never fail God because they believe the lie. If you have not, the Bible says, all, for all of all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Lord. If you believe there's no sin in you, you're telling a lie. But I'm here to tell you that there is a deliverer that can take you from stage to stage to stage to stage. And each stage, you will see victory. Victory. 
And so in this year of the recovery, not only are you going to pursue God, but he has promised, if you pursue me, I'm going to pursue you. I'm going to pursue you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have a conversation with blessings. I'm going to have a conversation with multiplying. I'm going to have a conversation in the city and in the field. You know what that means? Whether I'm country or not, whether I'm, whether I'm citified or not, the blessings are going to be upon me. And God is telling us that wheresoever I have assigned you, there is the blessing that will come upon you. I pray that this word was a blessing to you guys this afternoon. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that, Lord, because you use the word shall, we understand that it not only speaks of the present, it also speaks of the future. And so, Lord, our present and our future is in your hands. Lord, you have a plan, and that plan is to give us a future. It is a must. It is guaranteed. And, Lord, we speak against the lies of the enemy that wants us to stay in a foreign land, that wants us to stay in a position that you have not ordained for us, simply because we doubt that we can still receive the promise. But you told us today, Lord, that even after you command the curse, even in the midst of a curse, if we return, if our heart turns to you, that you're not going to even allow us to walk all the way back. You are going to come in our current state and you're going to snatch us. And Lord, today we ask you for the anointing for us to revive and to step up in the name of Jesus right where we are. That's what you did for Samson. Right in the midst of the enemy, Lord, you raised him up and strengthened him again. But this time, Lord, we ask not just a one more strength, but a strength to walk many days in the name of Jesus. And so we rebuke death. We rebuke the assignment that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we release the assignment to, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. In the name of Jesus. We release our obedience. We release our obedience. We curse disobedience. We speak against disobedience and we ask in the name of Jesus for a mighty grace to be obedient. And so we ask for the power to become the sons and daughters of God. Because the sons and daughters of God shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I pray that you are blessed this afternoon. I pray that you are blessed. And we want you on behalf of prayer, faith, and encouragement ministries and pit stop ministries. We want to declare over you that your assignment is not over. You can still hunt it. You know what I love about hunting, Pastor Alex? The animal may have passed yesterday, but it left evidence that it was there. And I can look at the evidence, and I cannot judge how long ago it was here. And God is not going to allow you just to see the evidence of your past. But he's going to allow you to pursue it, overtake it, and you will recover. And while you're doing that, he's going to allow the blessings to come upon you, overtake you, just as he can. God bless you this afternoon. We love you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you.
short that he cannot reach, you know he'll fix it.